The SWIFT, or Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, is the largest online international money transfer system. However, a select group of countries are no longer covered by the SWIFT umbrella. First, it was Iran and North Korea, and then Russia, in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A discussion over an alternate payment system that facilitates payments between countries has been sparked as a result of this development. At the moment, Russia makes use of a system known as SPFS, which is System for the Transfer of Financial Messages, whilst China is working on building SIPS, which is Cross-Border Interbank Payment System. In this video, let's have a detailed conversation about SPFS and also investigate whether or not crypto is a viable alternative to SWIFT. The exclusion of Russian banks from the SWIFT system gives rivals such as China a rationale to promote digital versions of their own central bank's money in global trade and finance, something that could weaken the dollar's global clout. One may turn over some history pages to find an answer to this. Nearly a decade ago, India started its own payment system for payments to Iran in 2012. After a round of US sanctions impacted Iran's ability to engage in bilateral trade with India, Yuko Bank was made the primary payment agent between the two nations. As part of this arrangement, an Iranian bank would open a Wastro account with Yuko Bank. All importers from India could then submit rupee funds with this Wastro account to avail oil from Iran. Then Yuko Bank would route these payments to Iran. Bilateral trade between India and Russia between April 2020 and March 2021 amounted to more than $8 billion. India exported goods worth $2.6 billion, whereas Russia sent goods worth $5.48 billion. SPFS is a Russian equivalent of the SWIFT financial transfer system which was developed by the Central Bank of Russia and has been in development since 2014, when the US threatened to exclude Russia from the SWIFT system. But there are quite a few challenges in the system, the primary being that it only works within Russia with plans to integrate the network with the China-based SIPs. Consequently, the SPFS system is seen as a last resort and not a replacement for the SWIFT network, at least not as yet. There are talks to expand this system to developing nations such as Turkey and Iran. A range of agreements have been reached to link this system to other nations' payment systems in China, India, Iran, and countries inside the EAU which are planning to use SPFS directly. At the end of 2020, there were 23 foreign banks connected to the SPFS from Armenia, Belarus, Germany, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Switzerland. There are some crypto enthusiasts who argue that blockchain technology can replace the SWIFT network. Since a blockchain is a decentralized software and each transaction is recorded on a public distributed ledger, the cross-border payments can be secure, fast and reliable. Since the price of cryptocurrencies is highly volatile, they may not be considered an effective replacement of fiat currency, as yet. For instance, most digital currencies fell by as much as 9% in a day following the Russian invasion, a decline unheard of in the forex markets. As a matter of fact, Ripple, made on blockchain, is designed primarily to let banks and other financial services firms send money across borders fast and at a low cost. However, the crypto token is stuck in a legal feud with the US market regulator, the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. The regulator alleged the company and its executives sold $1.3 billion worth of the tokens in an unregistered securities offering. So, we can see that, as of now, there is no feasible alternative to the cross-border payment system largely controlled by SWIFT, though efforts are being made by Russia-led SPFS and China-led SIPs and to some extent by cryptocurrencies.